the most important thing about uh, engineering economics is uh, interest rate. Yet, we have a couple things we have to pay attention to. Okay, we have uh, to learn something about, a little bit about ethics. We have to learn, you know, something about um, uh, whether your project is optimized or not. So that's why engineering, uh, they do not take into consideration when they want to make a call in a project, whether to accept or not. Uh, they do not make it only on, you know, based on interest rate. We have some other factors. But mainly what we are going to be learning in this uh, course, um, we have to, uh, you know, focus on the interest rate. Uh, in order to do that, you are going to see, we are going to learn some formulas, okay, uh, formulating, estimating, evaluating, those will help us deciding which, you know, project to, uh, to choose based on analysis, economical, you know, uh, uh, tools and techniques. So we are going to use a little bit of math, a little bit of Excel sheet to make our life easier. For instance, if we take a look at uh, the interest rate, interest rate, okay, it is, they say it is the, you look at it nowadays, like the value of money, you know, uh, with respect to future. So if you have, let's say $100 now, now means the present. In the future, the claim is that money loses its value. So in order to adjust that, I have to add interest rate to it. So that's why we come up with this formula. Okay. And we have to keep in mind that um, when you are paying money, we call it interest. When someone is paying money, you know, uh, or interest to you because you loaned him or her money. That's we call it rate of return. So we have borrower's perspective. That means you pay interest to the bank. You are borrowing money from the bank. This is we call it interest. If it were to be the opposite, if it were to be you are the bank, okay, the customers who are paying, you know, interest on the loans, then it's going to be considered rate of return to you. It is the same way, same values, but you know, just to make, uh, to distinguish here between uh, you as a consumer, a borrower, and you as a lender who's looking for a profit. So when you take money from the bank, you are a borrower and that will be called interest rate. You have to pay interest. Okay. When you are the bank investing money and someone borrowing money from you, so you are the lender, okay? Therefore, they have to pay you. That we call it rate of return. And uh, we have a couple big, you know, um, chapters about rate of return. You can see it over YouTube. Interest rate and the rate of return, they have the same concept. And the concept is money has value with respect to time. So whenever you are investing, we use the term rate of return, ROR. If you are a regular customer and you are borrowing money from a bank, the money you are paying, extra money, extra rate, okay? We call it interest rate. Back to the formula here. What's interest rate? Interest paid over a time period expressed as a percentage of percent uh, of a principal. So this is interest rate. Interest rate, you know, that, that means you tell me 10% per year. So this is interest. If it is to, if it were to be amount, then I will call it just interest. Okay. So we have rate. We use this formula and we have the amount of the interest. So if I tell you, Hey, 10% over $100, right away you're going to tell me, oh, it is $10.
ten dollars is the amount. What's the interest rate? Is ten percent. Okay. Amount is ten dollars. The interest rate, ten percent. Uh, so what's the interest rate? Is the amount owed now minus the principal? Because you said, okay, you told me right now we have a hundred dollars. So the interest rate I is let's say I is equal uh, no no I the small I I equal to okay ten percent percentage that means interest rate okay percentage means interest rate so what's the amount I equal okay interest amount what's the amount you're going to tell me it is 10% times what? 100. So it is 100 times the 10%, which is equal to a, equal to 10. So the amount I, okay, is what? The amount I, okay, the amount of the interest is 10%. This I here is 10%. Okay, I mean, I'm sorry, $10. The percentage of that, the interest rate is 10%. So if I go back uh, to uh, this, the beginning of the slides, so we can recall something, we were discussing it offline. You have to keep something in your uh, mind. This is very important. Why they created this idea of interest rate? You might argue why it is 5%, 10%, 6%. That's a different story now. But why they created uh, this idea? They created this idea because they said, hey, you know, the money that you have now in the future will be devalued. It will be less value. Uh, take a look at, you know, uh, you know, minimum wages in USA. Maybe it used to be $3. Now we are talking about $15. So the value of money is going down. Uh, you can see some others, they, you know, it's different. So if you have, let's say, a property, it might go up most of the time. Okay, unless you have city problems, whatever, but typically it will go up uh, while the value of the currency goes down. Uh, unless, you know, the, uh, the even, even the currency is uh, covered by gold and, you know, uh, you know, a strong economy, always, always, you know, the values are with the asset more than with the money itself. So if you keep $100 in your pocket within a year, for the whole year, you are not using it. Uh, basically, what you are doing, you are losing about maybe 5% of that value. And that's why the uh, bank argues, hey, this is 2% uh, on your, uh, you know, account. So, uh, who decide that interest rate, why it is 2%, 3 5 this is a different story. Uh, but at the same token, this can create the problems in the societies because it will make the society not stable. Eventually, it's not going to make it stable. And it's going to make, uh, you know, people in lots of debt. Especially, let's say you are a student, you want to get loans, you know, uh, for your education purposes, you finish your school, you are going to end up having, let's say, $100,000 and the interest rate is 6%. This is a huge amount. Uh, if you uh, want to, you know, get a house, uh, if the house, that let's say the interest rate is 5%, by the end of 30 years, you are going to end up paying for that house, for, you know, three times worth its value. So this is a big deal. Now, but this is not our topic now. Uh, another thing I would like to emphasize on, you know, uh, in addition to time value of money, that means money has value with respect to time. The value of money is not constant. A dollar 20 years ago is not as powerful as a dollar now. Okay, and that's why we have to consider the factor of time. Uh, typically, we go by year. We say, hey, you know, we do our calculations, we check our budgets yearly. So most of the time, the interest, we ask per year. If it's given per year, then we divide it by 12. That means 12 months. 
Another thing we have to be careful about, another one, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to engineering, guys, in general here, uh, you have to keep in mind as uh, engineers, okay, yes, you might have uh, personal morals. Okay, good. You know, you believe cats are uh, better than dogs. Okay, that's good for you. But as engineer, we have our professional ethics. Okay, professional ethics. Uh, it's good to keep your uh, moral ethics. It's up to you. But we have to stick to professional uh, ethics. Okay, what's the career of engineering? You know, um, uh, asking you to follow. Yes, we have something we call it universal morals. You do not cheat, you do not kill, you do not hurt others, you do not lie. Okay, this is fine. But as engineer, we stick with the professional ethics, which is going to have most likely some universal morals, if not all of them, and maybe some of your personal morals. But the priority is for, for professional engineering ethics. This is our, as engineers, we have, you know, code of ethics. We have to follow, okay? We have to follow. Uh, back to the idea of interest rate here. Let's take a look at, a, you know, a quick example before we start the branching uh, out. So if I take a look at this, if I have $100 now, okay? If the interest rate or rate of return is 10%, that means the interest amount is $10. 10% times 100, it's $10. So what's the money after one year? It will be your principal, which is $100, okay? Plus your interest amount, which is $10. So that will make it 110, okay? This here, we call it, this here, we call it a present money. Now, present. After a year, it is 110. So we have a present, we have a future. So present money, $100. The money in the future is 110. It's 110. That means you can see the money in the future should be more than the money now. In other words, what I'm saying, $100 now is equivalent to 110 in the future. Why? Because we have to add to this money the factor that we discussed. What did we say? Money has value with respect to time. So $100 now is equivalent to $100 in the future after one year. 110 I mean, in the future. And this is the idea of interest rate. Okay? So back to, the, uh, to this, we can do a simple math. We have interest, okay? What's the interest? It is the principal, interest amount I'm talking. It is the principal times how many years times the interest rate. So back to this example, okay? We have $100. This is the principal, okay? The year is one. So I go back to here. So this will be the principal we said $100 times what? times n, n is 1, okay, times uh, the, prince, uh, the interest rate, which is 10%, so it is 0 0.1, okay, 0 0.1, this is 10%, so how much is it, this will give me the interest amount, which is going to be 10, and here we have 110y because it's the the principal plus the interest rate which is the 10 it will be 110 okay this here guys we call it simple interest rate why if you put here here is 2 after 2 years this will be 20 after 3 years this will be 30 after 4 years okay this will be 40 why because we call it simple interest rate. Every year is the same amount. Every year. Okay? 
This is, we call it simple interest rate. This we call it simple interest rate. Uh, so it is uh, very straightforward. Where's the problem? Our problem is with the uh, compound interest rate. Compound interest rate, it is not the same amount of interest you pay uh, per year. No. It is, you know, the interest, okay? You have the principal. The first year, you, you, you get your interest. Then the second year is not going to be, you know, the regular interest rate. It's going to be interest on the interest. That's why we call it compound. Interest on the interest. So it is the principal plus all the previously accrued interest rate times the interest example example see in the beginning here we have a hundred thousand dollars let's say the interest rate is how much 10 percent in year one it's straightforward you know if you want to even if you know you want to remember if you go back to what we did previously we said okay the total amount will be the principal plus what well, plus the interest amount so hundred thousand dollars. The interest amount is how much? Ten thousand. Okay. So the total amount after a year it's hundred thousand plus the interest amount. It will be hundred ten. If this were to be inter a simple interest, guess what? What's the next year? Will be another ten thousand. Third year another ten thousand. But this is compound interest. So what's going to happen? We are not going to go back to the original, you know, uh, 100,000 and get the interest. No, we're going to go second year. It's going to be based on the previous year. How much the previous year? 110. So now this is our target. So 110 here will get the interest out, out of it. So now the interest is 11, not 10. Simple interest, it will be 10. It will always stay 10, 10, 10, 10. But in compound, I the second year, it will be based on the, you know, um, amount with the interest rate, the previous amount with the interest rate. So that's why we do not use this. We use the one with the interest rate. So it is $11,000, okay? Uh, uh, it will be $11,000, the amount. Why? Because it's considering the total amount here, the previous amount that has already been, you know, uh, dealt with interest. So now this is our interest rate. I use it. Third year, also it will be pre uh, based on the previous, you know, uh, amount that has its interest rate as well. So that's why you're going to see a big difference, guys. If you take a look at it. Within the three years, what's the difference? About three thousand dollars. Simple interest rate will be one thirty, while compounded will be one thirty three. This is only for three years. Imagine now this is will be for uh, thirty years. This is really a disaster. Okay, from the borrower point of view. So uh, this is the idea of the interest rate. Later on in this chapter, we're gonna learn about minimum attractive rate of return okay because this is set by the financial department uh, to see whether i have to select uh, a project or not you know is it a good project or not we're gonna talk about it later on uh, so let's say i have money you come over hey you know i have good investment for you how much the rate of return you say oh, you can get uh, 10 percent per year well, I will say the minimum attractive rate for, you know, attractive rate of return is uh, 15. I don't like your product. Okay. We'll do this into more detail. Uh, some people, they call it a harder rate. Okay. And, uh, and this is the main idea of the chapter. Now we have to keep in mind uh, what we are going to be learning uh, later on. Okay, we talk about the present, the future. Those terminologies, you know, we are going to get more familiar with it.
So what we are going to be using later on, uh, we have to, and to get familiar with, you know, those formulas. This is very important to use. Why? Because in real life later on, we are not going to be doing this kind of math, you know. I'm not going to be uh, every time uh, going over this formula and say, hey, what's compound interest rate? Okay, you get me the uh, the interest rate, then you, you know, this interest rate, you get me the amount, okay, then that amount will be added to the total uh, amount. Then next year, I will use that as a, I will use it as a principal. Then next year, what's going to happen? Get the interest rate on this, and this, the total will be the principal for the third year. Um, with, the, you know, principal as, a, I mean, a new principal. So compound interest rate, as you see, is going to get complicated, you know, if it's 30 years. So I'm going to be doing this all the time. I'm going to be using this formula, you know. A, we have the present, then you have the summation of the amount multiplied by the interest rate, as we did here. Are we going to keep doing that? Because compound interest rate does, is not straightforward. Compound interest rate is not just principal. Give me the number of years and the interest rate. As I said, it is, you know, the interest on the interest. So there is always what? There is the principal amount, okay, and the interest rate. The second one will be based on the previous one, not the real actual principal. Sometimes I use the new, you know, terminology is new principal. But the proper way is to say it is based on the previously uh, calculated amount, including its interest rate. And that's why they said principal plus all accrued interest rate multiplied by the interest. Yes, this interest is constant. In our example, it's 10%. Even in real life, could be fluctuating. Could be every two years, you know, something else. But in this example, it's constant. But what's changing, what's changing is the... Um, the previous amount, every previous amount, you know, it's calculated based on interest rate. You put it here. Okay. So in the beginning is the principal 100. Interest amount is 10,000. You say, hey, the total amount is 110. Second year, you do not use the principal itself we started with. We use the previous uh, year. This previous amount is the amount that has the interest in it. Okay. So it is 110. It's not anymore 100. So this 110, now I use it to calculate what? I use it to calculate my new interest. So I will say 110. Okay. 110. And what's my interest? 10%. It's 11. So now my total amount is uh, based on the previous one. Third year, same thing. So this is, we call it compound. So rather than keep doing this, in economics, we invented some formulas, okay? And some terminologies will make it easier on us. So we said, hey, present means P. This is the present value. Money now. Money in the future, we call it F, okay? If it is a series of consecutive payment, like say every year I pay 1,000, every year, same amount, uh, same period, this is, I call it A, okay? And always, most of the time, we we'll refer to it number of uh, years or number of interest, uh, you know, paid uh, per year, per month, okay? Uh, I is the interest rate. Those here, they are going to help us, you know, to use formulas later on rather than using regular, uh, you know, uh, by hand equation. And one of them you can see, you know, it's either we can use Excel sheet or we have formulas we are going to discuss later on. So if I tell you uh, an Excel sheet and this, as I said, you know, we'll have something on YouTube. You can see it later on. If you want to find the future of uh, a principal amount, what do you do? Okay, you put an Excel sheet, this function, okay, FV, that means a future value. 
give me the interest, okay, the number of years, give me A or P, I can give you the future value. So this will, and later on, we are going to have formulas by hand, you know. So this is Excel sheet, and we have something by hand. So rather than going through uh, the hassle of compound interest rate, we're going to start using what? We're going to start using using this stuff. So everything has to do with that will be way much easier. Another thing here we have to emphasize on before we leave, and this is very simple. We have to talk about something uh, we are going to use a lot, cash flow. And the uh, cash flow has its diagram. Okay. Cash flow can be cash flow in or out. Okay. When we talk about cash inflow, that means something you are earning. Okay. It says it's you look in flow. That means it's in your pocket. Okay. Cash out to flow, it is out of your pocket. You are paying. So examples of cash inflows, uh, revenues, uh, profit, you know, profit is different than revenues. Revenue could be profit, could be just your money back. Okay, revenue is very general. Uh, receipts, incomes, uh, scholarships, uh, gifts, uh, if you get some extra dollars. So this is cash inflows. Cash out of flows is disbursement, payments. You pay for your loan, that's cash out of flow. Okay, you pay for your projects, taxes, that's cash out of flow. Net cash flow is to see how much, uh, you know, uh, uh, I made by the end of the year. So I put my cash in the flow minus the out of flow. I can know whether I made money or not. Uh, okay. Now, the last one, where is it here? So the last one here about cash diagram, if you make money, that means cash in the flow. Okay. You know, we got some revenues, or we made money. So the arrow will be, you know, upward. So this means what? I made money. I made money. Here, let's say I'm investing. I paid I paid eighty dollars. Therefore, this is what downward. Okay, you can see it. This is I lost money here. I paid. Here I'm paying money. Okay. So whenever we make money, the the arrow is uh, downward. You you are making money or you are getting money. It is upward. Uh, last topic, uh, quickly, you know, financing can be two kinds. We have equity financing. And this here, you have to have something in order to get, you know, a loan. This is, we call it equity, okay? So you have to get it from your uh, earning, if you have stocks, if you have, you own something. Borrowed money it could be, we call it debt uh, financing, okay? I'm sorry. Uh, debt financing, it's borrowed fund from where? From outside sources, like what? You know, uh, loans, mortgage, okay? Venture, just call it. This we call it debt financing, okay? Debt financing. Um, 